हर राम हर राम 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 हर 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 कृष्ण हर कृष्ण 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 हर 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 राम हर राम 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 हर हर हरे कृष्ण Krishna, welcome everybody uh, to the Sunday love feast of Krishna Temple Zurich, and of course I would like to thank uh, Anadi Krishna Prabhu, Sugi Prabhu, and all the other accompaniments. Very beautiful kirtan, isn't it? It was very, very meditative and very nice. So now we go on to the next phase of our Sunday love feast, which is a philosophical discussion, and. Um, Today's lecture is quite uh, unique because it will be given by a person who is a product of this yatra or this temple. And it will be given by His Grace Ras Ashray Ram Prabhu Haribo. <laughs> so, um, yes, the arrangement is such that the speaker generally sits here, and I guess he also has a visual presentation for us to follow. So, perhaps we could help him set it up a little bit. And while all of this is happening, first is Eman kind of English here. <laughs> so everybody understands English? Yes. Wonderful. That makes it less awkward for me because I'm not a native German speaker. Otherwise, we always have a translation. So does anyone need a Russian translation? I don't know Russian, so I cannot. Uh, how many need Russian translation? One. And is there anyone who would be willing to? Uh, do this Russian translation? Russian also, huh? So uh, how should we arrange it, Ram? That we have two devotees who need Russian translation. Oh, you could do translation. Wonderful. So how about we make such an arrangement that we make some space here on the left-hand corner. And uh, maybe one of who would, between the two of you, who would like to translate? Would you? Okay, so maybe you can sit here, and we can have a Russian translation here. If you don't mind, just making some space for them. And we can all come closer. Generally, our speakers, they don't bite, so <laughs> it's safe. Yeah. <laughs> so we can have the Russian translation here. Matuji, if you can also bring your chair here. We just move a little bit ahead. And the translation can happen at the back, perhaps. Maybe you can go in that corner. Thank you very much for your cooperation. And before we move further, how many are here for the first time? OK. You can be very brave and raise your hand high. It helps me. <laughs> how many are here for the first time? Please, once again. Oh, wow. Wow, we have a lot of um, individuals here. So, a very warm welcome. Uh, what's your name, sir? Kevin. Kevin. We have a group. Okay, and what's this group like? So we have Kevin in the group. Who else? Benny. Benny. Welcome. Francisca. 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 Daniel. Daniel. So that's your group, huh? Yeah, like I was here before. Okay, very nice. Uh, and you got your friends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wow, wonderful. We are very happy to have you. Thank you for joining us. And your name? Sumed. Sumed. Anybody I missed out? OK. Wow, very nice. Also, Luca, it's your first time during. Yeah, OK, welcome. So um, yes, once again, a very warm welcome to the Sunday Love Feast of Krishna Temple Zurich. And I will introduce the program just for your convenience. So um, now we have this philosophical discussion by Rasashraya Ram Prabhu from 4 to 5. 
At five o'clock, we have the Sunday love feast, which is a vegetarian prashadam, sacred food. Um, and then at 6.15, we have the Japa meditation here in the temple hall. So I would really request you to not miss this opportunity and assemble here by 6.15 so that we can start with the Japa meditation. And then at 7 o'clock, we have the Arotik ceremony. Again, we get to chant, dance, and we see a very grand ceremony. 8 o'clock, there is a Kirtan, or we sing further the mantra from 8 to uh, until 9.30. And there is a special evening darshan on Sundays. And this Sunday, we have a special guest from Belgium, uh, our uh, temple in Radhadesh, Manu Prabhu, and very known Kirtaniya. So it will be a very enriching experience. So please do not hesitate to join us. So now I don't want to take much of Sashtra Prabhu's time, but I would also, um, I intend to also introduce him because it's nice to get to know who we are hearing from. So Rasashray Ram Prabhu, as I mentioned already, is a product of our Yatra, our temple. He's been associated with the temple since birth. So he practically grew up in Krishna consciousness in this temple. He's a disciple of His Holiness Krishna Shetra Swami Maharaj. <coughs> and um, he is engaged in the temple in various capacities um, and also in administration. And he's doing very well. And he's one of the most appreciated uh, devotees in the younger generations and quite an um, example for all of us. And um, a bit about his academic background. And also, like he was, uh, he, his roots lie in Sri Lanka, but he was born here in Switzerland. And a bit about his academic background. Um, he is doing his MSc in robotics and computing. What is it? OK. OK, he finished, sorry. You know, these technical things, science is, I'm very far away from <laughs> science. So he finished his MSc also, you know, academically very well established individual. He finished his MSc in robotics, systems and computing from ETH, uh, one of our esteemed universities here. So thank you very much, Rasasha Ram Prabhu, for speaking on the topic 24 teachers, a very interesting topic. So, yes, please hear with rapt attention. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Thank you very much. Also, uh, welcome from my side. Today is a very important day for Switzerland, the parliament elections. So I think as a responsible citizens, you have all handed in your votes and came here to the temple with calm mind. So, um, also, uh, for the first time comers. I have to say I am also kind of in your boat today because I am giving the first time this discussion, this talk on a Sunday program. So it is a little new for me also. I hope it works out well. I hope you can take something, at least something valuable home. Um, I try to do something today uh, interactive and I hope you, I invite you all to participate. And so hopefully we can take something um, home today, valuable. First, I want to sing a song which we always sing. This is a song called Jayarada Madhava. It describes the, how beautiful the spiritual world is. So you can see the lyrics and uh, just shortly we will chant this and then begin. Jaya Rata Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Rata Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Gopi Janavala Ba Jaya Giri Varadari Jaya Giri Varadari J 
जय गोपी चान वाला जय गिरीवरदारी जय गिरीवरदारी यशोदनांदन ब्रज जन रंजना यशोदनांदन ब्रज जन रंजना यमुना तीरावन छारी यमुना तीरावन छारी जय रात माधव गुंज बिहारी जय रात माधव गुंज बिहारी हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे कृष्णा कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे जय प्रभु पदा प्रभु पदा प्रभु पदा श्रील प्रभु पदा to start with a small prayer as a gratitude for the spiritual teachers who have given us the some very valuable transcendental knowledge and then we can start our topic today om akyana timirandasya gyananchala shalakaya chakshurun militam yena tasmay sri gurave namaha श्री चैतन्य मनोभिस्तम स्थापित येन पूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मार्यम तदाती स्वदातिखम वाचाकूप्य कृपा सिंधु्य 
पतिताम पावनेप्यो वैष्णवेप्यो नमो नम नमो ओं विष्णुपताय कृष्ण प्रस्ताय पूतले श्रीमदी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सरस्वती देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्यादि सदारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत कदादार श्रीवासदी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो टुडे इज टॉपिक इट्स नेम्ड 24 टीचर्स एंड मे बी यू आर वंडरिंग हु दे आर दिस इज फ्रॉम अ सेक्शन ऑफ अ बुक कॉल्ड श्रीमद् भागवतम दिस इज अ वेरी हाई transcendental literatures some of you might have heard the famous bhagavad gita and one can say that the shrimad bhagavatam is kind of a continuation of the book bhagavad gita and there we find some section about these 24 teachers and i thought this is very interesting because in all our life we are facing or we are dealing with teachers we are learning from different types of teachers and as a cognitive being this is something we require for our survival but also for our self realization good teachers in the beginning of our birth our mother is our first teacher she teaches us how to eat how to drink how to walk how to talk everything what we require or every basic necessities which we need to know in order to move around this world and the mother with together with her with the father they both teach us how to move in a society what are moral ethics what are mod- moral behaviors conducts good what is mean to what does it mean to be a good human being and then they also bring us to the school and there we are facing other teachers who are teaching some subjects which in um, which we also require later in our lives but what happens after we finish school who is going to be our teachers afterwards two years ago i graduated until that i pretty much knew what i want to become what i want to learn so i know my syllabus i know my professors they gave me the syllabus i prepared for the exams and so i could uh, successfully complete that but then i realized when i graduated now i am on my own now no one is going to tell me what to learn or what to study i have to figure out my own syllabus i have to figure out myself what do i want to learn in my life and from whom i want to learn it so this is especially a very important question in our lives and especially because in our schools nowadays we are not taught so much about spiritual knowledge and wisdom so therefore it is very important that we on our own know where to go and where to look after spiritual wisdom and find also according qualified teachers I want to ask now a little bit of provocative question and um, please don't scare <laughs> what would you learn from this person <laughs> I think the reactions will be very very mixed some of you will say oh no please no why I'm bringing this guy up here <laughs> sorry for that being a pro- politician in a in our sp- <laughs> in our Sunday program Maybe you would say what shall I learn from him definitely no relationship tips or marriage tips so definitely not maybe you will not we will we will say I will definitely not learn how to how to be a parent that you will also say but maybe you will say he was a good, good businessman maybe I can learn how to become rich how to become a president or how to become a president how to go, have a good election um, Yeah, campaigns etc 
Maybe you will see, you will want to learn how to have a charming haircut like him and charm your opponents. Maybe that is what you want. But I want to, but I'm bringing this topic up is, we can learn in life from positive and from negative examples. From positive examples, we can learn what to do and how to do it. And from negative examples, we can learn what to avoid, how to not do things. This is also one kind of a learning. And this is also a mindset we should have in our, when we look for a spiritual um, wisdom and knowledge. You may have heard of the famous book, the most famous about yoga topics, the Bhagavad Gita. This is a conversation between two friends, between Arjuna, who is standing there or sitting there on the right side, and between his friend, Krishna, who is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And all their lives, they are actually cousins, and all their lives they were acting as friends, doing all friendly activities together. But then an event happened. Arjuna had to go on the battlefield and fight against an army who were also his relatives. And at that time, Arjuna asked some very important questions which came to his mind, very important spiritual questions. And at that time, he, he, he decided to ask that question to his friend, Lord Krishna, because he is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and he knows the right answers. And since Arjuna asked these questions in a very sincere mood, Krishna also gave very high elevated answers. This happened 5,000 years ago, when Krishna appeared here to perform some of his transcendental pastimes. And in that same period, also another incident happens. On the right side, you can see another of his friend, who is also his cousin, Uddhava. When Krishna appeared on this earth, and when he completed all his pastimes, when he finished the purpose why he appeared on this earth, he was ready now to wrap up everything and disappear from our material vision. And at that time, Uddhava, his friend, he approaches Krishna and says, Krishna, you are going back to the spiritual world. Please also take me with you. But Krishna said at that time to him, you will definitely come to me, but please stay a little bit longer in this world and help the people of this new age called Kali Yuga, the age of quarrel, please help them and give them some transcendental knowledge that they also can, in this very difficult age, can get some transcendental spiritual topics. But Uddhava asked them Krishna, but Krishna, these people in this age which we live now in, they will not have so much time for spiritual topics and not so much spiritual interest. They will be much interested in material advancement, etc. How can I bring them or how can I teach them spiritual principles? This will be very difficult. So please, my dear Krishna, can you explain the basic spiritual principles in a very simple and easy manner with simple examples that a layman like we also can understand high spiritual principles. And then Krishna actually starts to narrate a discussion between a king named Yadu and a young man, an Avaduta. You can see here on the picture the young man, this is the Avaduta. Avaduta actually means that is someone who has realized so much his spiritual original position that he doesn't care anymore for the material existence. And he wanders very freely without any anxieties through the world and is always happy and satisfied. That is the definition of Avaduta. And this particular Avaduta, he was also wandering around the world from s villages to villages and practicing his spiritual activities. And one time, 
this king Yadu, he sees this Avaduta. And this king got a little bit surprised. Why he's surprised? The king addresses the Avaduta and says, Hey young man, you look very learned, very expert, very handsome and eloquent and very capable of doing many things. Why have you dedicated so much of your life for spiritual practice? This was a surprise for the king. Seeing a young man who is very learned, expert, eloquent, handsome, to be so much involved in spiritual practices. Because if we would see someone with these qualities, and we see him that he has dedicated most of his life for spirituality, maybe he had become a monk, we would advise him, why you waste your time in spirituality? If you would pursue a material career, definitely you would be a very successful man. And this is our general misconception that we think spirituality is only for those who are materially unsuccessful. We think that those who have failed in material careers, or those who have uh, a failure in their love affairs or whatever, we think they end up in spirituality, but this is not the case. Spirituality is meant for everyone. So this king was very curious why this young man dedicated so much of his attention to spiritual knowledge. And this young man, this Avaduta, then says, when I was walking on this earth, I met 24 particular beings or objects, and from them, I derived some very important spiritual principles. And from these spiritual principles, I could understand who I am and whom I have to serve. And these 24 teachers, they were so important for me that I have dedicated my life to my spiritual practice. And he starts to explain who these 24 teachers are. And I am listing them here. So it's the earth, so the Avaduta is learning something from the earth, from the wind, from space, from water, from fire, from the moon, from the sun, from a pigeon, from a python, from an ocean, from a moth, from a bee, from an elephant, deer, fish, from a honey thief, from a prostitute, from a hawk, a child, a girl with bracelets, from an arrow maker, a snake, a spider, and a wasp. Now you are wondering what he learned from them. So he is learning from each of these 24 objects or, or living beings something very important. And what I want to do as an exercise with you is I want to figure out with you two together what we can learn from these 24 teachers. What spiritual truths or principles can we learn? And I want to do a kind of an exercise or I want to give some time where you yourself or a, in a group, you discuss among yourself what would you learn, what spiritual principles would you learn from these 24 teachers. And as, as an example, I will give an example so that you can know what I'm meaning. So from the earth, the Avaduta learns what it means to be tolerant. We are dumping so much garbage into Mother Earth. We are the reason for so much deforestation and global pollution. And we kill so much, we slaughter, and we fight with other nations, we shed so much blood. But the Mother Earth is very, very tolerant to us. For example, the Avaduta, from the mountains, he sees how the mountains are reserving so much water in the form of snow and glaciers, and the mountains provide that water for us so that we can survive. The Mother Earth, She's the source for all the plants, for all the trees. The trees give us flowers, fruits, shades, shelter. 
And even when we cut the tree, the tree doesn't um, protest. It let you cut it, and with the uh, with the uh, cotton wood, you can still use the tree. You can use it for fire, or you can build some furniture. So the Avaduta learns from the mother what it means to be tolerant. And he understands that a spiritually realized person, he is always tolerant even if he is wronged. If an aggressor comes to him and does something wrong, the a spiritually enlightened person doesn't feel that he has to like defend or attack back. He understands that the reason why the aggressor doing is doing or behaving in a way, or it has a reason behind why the aggressor is ag acting very aggressive. So the spiritually advanced person will figure out what the reason is and help that aggressor to overcome his, his violating or his violent uh, mentality and bring him back to the path of spirituality. This is, of course, a very high level of tolerance, but this Avaduta learns this from, the, from Mother Earth. So similarly, I want now you also um, pick some of these elements. For some minutes, think about what spiritual principles you would learn from these teachers. You can do it for yourself or in a group, as a two or in a bigger group and so that we can maybe can have maybe a varieties of teachers today or elements i would suggest maybe those who are sitting in this area that you may you can focus on the first line and pick two or three of the first teachers those who are sitting maybe in this area to f pick up the second line those who are sitting here in that direction maybe from the third line and all of you here maybe from the fourth line pick some two or three teachers and think what would you learn from them is that okay yeah is the task clear okay <laughs> then i give you some minutes to <laughs> <think about it. laughs> and also remember um, okay. um, also remember um, you can learn positive and negative things so for some you can learn positive things and from some things you can learn some th things that you not should do <laughs> Thank you. 
some uh, interesting discussions so I am gonna invite you now and uh, please invite you to pick one teacher and maybe explain what you have discussed in your group and what would you learn from them Manu? So, um So first day today meeting Luca and um, he's mentioning the sun and everything turns around the sun and the sun gives her light to everything and anyone without discrimination and so he compared it to Srila Prabhupada who we all sitting around him and the spiritual master is um, without discrimination gives his um, wisdom, his knowledge, his spiritual relation realization to anyone without um, qualification. So this is like the all-merciful aspect. Wow, very wonderful. Thank you very much. The thing with the sun, uh, we have many examples. The other example is also how the sun, or how you said that the spiritual teachers, they take, evaporate the ocean with some mercy and pour it as a rain onto us and give that transcendental um, knowledge. Let's see what the Avaduta learns. He's learning also a very, very interesting thing, which I never thought, uh, thought of before. He sees how the sun is evaporating water from the ocean and then turns it into clouds. And when the time is appropriate, it returns the water again in the form of a rain. And what this Avaduta learns is that in our life we will get material opulences or wealth or any position or whatever. We will receive it in our, in our lives and we should use it for, our, for a good purpose, for a spiritual purpose. But when the time has arrived, we should also give it back. We should also return it. Whatever material wealth or wisdom you have, 
you should return it. For example, if you are also in a leadership position or if you become a president, when the time is ripe or ready, you should also hand it over to the next person. You should not, till you are 80 and 90 years old, be a president. You should give it back so the next generation can advance and blossom. So this is a very interesting um, thing, particular thing, which the Avoduta is also learning. Of course, there are not, no right and wrong answers. All answers are correct. We can learn so many different things from these examples. Someone else? Yes, child. Mm -hmm. Maybe yes. Child, maybe he learned how to be simple, like a child. Uh huh. This is uh, yeah. Child, child is very innocent and very simple. What does uh, Abuduta learn from him, from a child, is? He sees that a well-protected child is never anxious. The child, if he knows, if he has a good mother and a good father, the child will never be afraid or anxious. It, it plays around very freely and very happily and satisfied. Why? Because he knows if there is a danger, his father or mother will protect him. And what the Avaduta learns is that we also have a father, an original father, Lord Krishna. And a spiritualist understands that Krishna is always there to protect us. So therefore a spiritualist is also never of anxieties. Free, he's always free of anxieties. Never worried because he knows Krishna is there, the Supreme Father is there to protect him. Actually, the, um, the Vedas, they describe something very interesting or funny. They think, they say two people, two types of people are free of anxieties. One type, I have explained, the devotees or those who have trust in Krishna, and the others are fools <laughs> or some retarded people because they don't have the sense of danger around them. They don't feel what is happening around them. So they also wander around this world without any sense of danger and anxiety. But of course, we should understand that the stage of a spiritualist, of a devotee, is much higher because he knows how to act and really become free of anxieties. Thank you very much for that point. Yes? Uh, for me, it's a little bit difficult to speak in English. <laughs> so, uh, we're looking to fish. Mm. And I think you can learn from the fish the system of the natural tool. Someone eats, the bigger eats the, the little, and every fish has a position in the, in the, I don't know in English, some, some is different from the other. Mm -hmm. And so you can learn that everyone has a position in the natural, and they have a sense in mm. the natural. Thank you very much for this nice point, very valid point. The Avaduta, he is learning from the fish, also a very interesting point. And I would actually say that he is learning from the moth, from the bee, elephant, deer, and the fish, a combined, a very important knowledge. Let's start with the fish. Sorry. I What he sees from the fish is that when you throw a bait into the water, it comes, it, it wants to taste that bait and it grabs it. But unfortunately, since the bait is um, put on a hook, 
he is captured. So this shows that if we let our senses go freely, or particularly if, our let, if we don't control our tongue and try to satisfy the tongue uncontrolled and unlimitedly, we will be a slave of our senses of the tongue. So this particular thing is, it, is, it shows how the tongue attracted to taste can bind us and bring us danger. And as a thing, I think I would also, because these all belong together, I would also discuss the moth. A moth, he sees the fire, a beautiful form, and it flies around it. But it, if it goes too close to the fire, he's caught up by the fire and is burned. So our eyes naturally want to see beautiful things. But we have to also be careful that we don't lot, let our eyes just go freely. Sometimes a beautiful man or a woman will entice us and we will think, oh, this is what I have searched for. But maybe there is behind a big danger. So a spiritualist, he's very well trained of his eyes and knows how to, what real beauty is and that real beauty lies in the spiritual transcendental abodes and in Krishna. From a bee, maybe you can guess what will come from the bee, which next sense would come? Smell. Smell, exactly. So the bee, um, attracted by the fragrance, goes to different flowers and here we see a bee on a lotus, but if it stays too long on the lotus and it becomes dark at night, the lotus will close and the bee will be entrapped in the lotus. So this is an example how we should also control our nose. From an elephant it might be a little difficult to guess. In India, when you want to capture an elephant, a male elephant, you dig a hole, put some leaves on it and you then present a female elephant. And the elephant, the male elephant, because it wants to feel the touch, the sense of touch, and particularly the sexu sexual attraction, it will run after the female elephant and will be entrapped in that hole. So this also shows how we should regulate our sense of touch. And the last one remaining is for the ears. Some hunters, they play beautiful melodies to attract a deer. And when, when the deer is attracted, it comes to the trap and the hunter can easily um, yeah, okay. grab. I don't know how, I think maybe flutes or other instruments, but they, some hunters, they capture um, deers by the sound. So these five teachers, they show us how we should train and regulate our senses, how important it is that not the senses become our master, but we become the master of our senses. Does it make sense? Yes. What else did you learn? We had a, we had a first line, so I was uh, observing uh, water as a teacher and I remembered one modern example from one uh, scientist from Japan, Masaru Emoto. He wrote uh, the book Message of Water and he was uh, using water and uh, he was like exposing water to different sounds or words and when he was chanting some mantras or saying to the water, I love you, I love you, I love you, or chanting some om. Then he was putting the water uh, into the freezer, and then he was putting this ice in, uh, under the ele electric microscope, and then he could see like molecules and crystals of the water, they were in the shape of snowflakes, like very nice, harmonious uh, shape they had. 
And on the other side, when he was saying to the water, I hate you, you're ugly, I hate you. And then he was doing the same with the water. Then the crystals of the water under the electric microscope were totally chaotic, very ugly. And this teaches us actually that by words we are saying to other people and to ourselves, we are creating actually harmony or disharmony. Well, very interesting experiment and thought. Thank you for sharing. Let's see what the Avaduta learns. He compares water to saints. He compares them to very spiritually advanced people. He understands that saints, they are like transparent as water. Their heart is very transparent and full of love for Krishna. And they can give the transcendental subject matters of spirituality in a transparent way through a transparent media to us. You can see how the water flows down from the river. They bring us the highest spiritual wisdom down to us in a transparent media that we can understand it. And the water also, um, when it splashes, how you call it, um, it has makes some nice sounds. So the words of the saints are very pleasing. And the water, it washes out us, it purifies us. So similarly, a saint, when he meets, when we meet a saint, he will actually purify our existence or our understanding and our intelligence and see and show us like the what is right way and what is a wrong way to do. And he purifies in that way our yeah, lifestyle. Um, I would to say something about would like to say something about the moon. Uh, I try to do my gardening uh, by the moon cycles um, and uh, this tells me that uh, there's a right time for everything. Um, so uh, sometimes we just have to wait until uh, the good time quality is here to do uh, something um, in the garden or in our life. And the negative aspect uh, could be, I think you say in English, a lunatic, when somebody's lunatic, mm -hmm. or uh, launish, lunish uh, in Dutch. Um, because the moon is always changing, so like, let's not change too much, like, uh, uh, like sometimes small children do. Uh, they are very happy, and in the next moment they are <laughs> crying. Uh, so let's try to stay uh, in our middle. Thank you very much for sharing. It's very interesting how like this, our perception is very, very also very individual from person to person. The Avaduta, he learns from the, mo uh, from the moon how our body is subject to changes, but not we as a soul. So the moon goes to different phases from new moon to full moon. And we will see different parts of the moon. And even when the moon is not visible anymore, it doesn't mean that the moon is, has disappeared, that the moon is dead or gone. So similarly, our body, when we take birth and we accept these material elements, we start as a child, we grow, and uh, we get older, we may have children, and then we get to old age and then die. These are all changes subject to the body, but not to the soul. The soul, the observer, we as entity, we still remain as an individual being, and we continue our existence in other types of birth and bodies. So this is a thought, a very also very nice uh, example the Avaduta is uh, teaching us. I would like to say Hare Krishna. Um, this is work. Hello. <laughs> Can you help me please? Yes. Yeah. yeah? Okay. okay, Hare Krishna. Closer. Mm -hmm. A little bit closer. Closer? No? no? <laughs> Sorry, I'm not, not oh. good with <laughs> electronics. <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe you can hear me even. Okay, you can this. put it closer. Okay, oh, yeah. <laughs> now it works. Good. Um, so yeah, I would like to say something about bees. 
um, I think we can learn from these uh, devotional service because they are um, like 24 hours they are collecting the nectar from the flowers and making the honey for us uh, without um, having the honey for themselves mm. no. thank you very much uh, we, we discussed B that how the Abaduta learns the sense of um, smell and also another thing the Abaduta learns in this connection is also a spiritually expert he will derive transcendental message from different literatures and topics like a bee going to flower to flower and takes the essence a spiritually advanced person he will read many scriptures and can take the essence and understand the essence and maybe if you are in this connection and you thought like how the bee is collecting but we are enjoying maybe we can also discuss the honey thief as you said the bee is collecting honey his whole life but who are enjoying it we on our breakfast table for our toast yeah we are enjoying the honey and what he learns from this is in our lives we accumulate so much material wealth and money etc and we think that we can keep it but when we ask ourselves really we can understand when we took birth, we came naked without anything. And when we die, we will also leave empty handedly. We will not take anything with us. So what happens? All the wealth, probably you cannot enjoy it in your life. Someone else is going to enjoy it. Or maybe the states will put a high taxation on your wealth and money. So this is an understanding that the Abaduta learns from it. That instead of accumulating material wealth, we should accumulate spiritual wealth in our lives, that can, that which we can take to the next destination for the next birth. Maybe one more. We were thinking about hawk as someone who can see the picture from above, like see the bigger picture and look from a different point of view than mm. his own. Mm. Oh, this is a very good point. Um, the Avoduta sees a very simple uh, lesson, learns it, it's a very short lesson. He sees one hawk, very weak hawk, having meat in his mouth and stronger hawks ap approaching him. They are very hungry and want to, want to take the meat from that weaker hawk and they start to attack the weaker hawk and what happens is that first the hawk feels very anxiety very is very afraid but the moment it lets the meat out of his mouth and throws it away so that the other hawks can take it the weaker hawk feels very much safe and satisfied so this shows that Sometimes we hang on things. We think we want to possess it for our possessions. But the understanding is that Krishna, the Supreme Being, is the true proprietor of everything. We are just using his elements and his belongings. It all belongs to Krishna. And when we have that mentality, we will not be so much possessive and want to hang on material things. But this is also a very... Uh, good point that you brought. Since time is approaching, um, it's very fast, I didn't expect that. I thought, I think maybe I will say some concluding words, maybe we have some questions, and then those of who you want to take um, prasadam, the feast, who you can take, go out and take, and some of you who are interested to learn what else, other things we can learn, we can maybe, um, yeah, individually see what other things it is uh, what the Advoduta is learning from the other things what I want to give you in this session is that how important it is to have good teachers and qualified teachers and especially also for our material um, advancement so it is very important also that we among our friends 
and relatives and whoever we um, have activities together that we discuss transcendental subjects, dis discuss with them and learn from them. And it is also maybe very favorable and helpful if we have a spiritual teacher, a master who knows our position, who understands where we stand, where we are, and individually also help us to grow in our spiritual life. And one such spiritual teacher was Srila Prabhupada, who founded this movement, this Krishna consciousness movement. And we are very grateful for him. And he gives a particular, a very simple method that we can use for our spiritual advancement. Because we see that our Dutta, he is very highly elevated. Therefore, whenever he looks, or whatever he watches and sees, he always derives spiritual wisdom from it. And if we want to also elevate to that, we have to also discover that we are spiritual soul and not the material elements and the body. And Srila Prabhupada gives a very ancient but very simple and powerful method how we can achieve this. And that is called the chanting of the Maha Mantra, of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. It's a very easy process, but this mantra and this chanting, it can open so many um, paths and uh, doors that we haven't discovered. It can show our fundamental existence that we are spirit, not material, and that we, are, we have a relationship with Krishna, with the Supreme Being, and that relationship is very sweet. And this holy name also then shows us or teaches us how to de develop that pure love to the supreme object of love, Krishna. So therefore also I want to uh, encourage you, please also take this name with you home and try to chant it and maybe experiment and see um, how it changes your life. And also when you walk and go to work, also observe things among, around yourself and ask, your, ask the question, what spiritual principle would you learn from the objects that you observe? And as a end, I also want to just mention this topic which I brought up. As I said, it's from the Srimad Bhagavatam. It's a very transcendental literature, high literature, consisting of 12 sections, cantos we call. And if you are interested, please check them out. And if you are maybe new, maybe the Srimad Bhagavatam is maybe uh, too um, dense and too big of a literature, please check out the Bhagavad Gita. This is kind of our beginner guide to spiritualism and yoga. And please check that out. It is a very magnificent book with so much dense of spiritual wisdom. And I'm sure it will also help you in your life. So thank you very much for your participation. Um, if you have any questions or some comments. Oh, next time take on the say instead of Trump. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Uh, me interesting really what you learned from the prostitute. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> because we uh, speak about that and it's difficult. Then I can, since you are interested, we can um, so see what we learn. Those of you who are hungry, don't, be, don't feel um, shameful. You can also go out and take. I will be not offended. And for those of you who are interested to learn more, we can shortly discuss what we can see. So from the prostitute, the Avaduta, he's learning from a particular prostitute called Pingala. What she does is at the night, she makes herself ready and goes out to the street expecting some customers. So she, she needs this for her livelihood, for her earnings. So she needs a customer. And then she, the first man walks by, she thinks, oh, she, this man might have, definitely have money, so he will certainly approach me for my service. But this man avoided her, neglected her, just walked by. Another man comes by, and Pingala thinks, oh, maybe he has definitely money, he wants to enjoy, so he will approach me. But also this man neglected her and went away. 
and she slowly, slowly started to feel some anxieties, like, come on, I need some earnings today, how should I survive? But all men, or whoever walks by, just neglected her. And the day, the night um, finished, and the day, the morning come. And then she learns something very interesting, that all her life she was thinking that she can derive some love from all these men and individual beings. But she forgot who can give us real love, or the, who the supreme object of love is. She thought that this man can give me love, this man, but she forgot that actually our supreme object of love is Krishna. It's also in our lives, maybe we have a crush on someone. We think, oh, I love him or her, and we expect he will love us back. But like these men, they might avoid us, maybe they might neglect us, they might, they might not like us. Oh, no, and we might think, oh, we have a crush on her or her or her, but they will all neglect us. Maybe you are already in your family life and you think your children will love you. But maybe when they are grown up, they will also neglect you, maybe. But the one person who will always love us is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Supreme Object of Love, Krishna. So this she understands then from this uh, example. Thank you. Okay, then I wish you a good appetite. And at 6.15 we will continue from Manta meditation. So thank you very much. And also thank you very much for participating and uh, discussing with us. And uh, see you after. Hare Krishna. His grace was our straight arm to Buki You want the project too? Yeah, sure.